Hey everyone, this is Buki from ArmoredTalk.com, your blog covering all of your Armored Warfare news and information. This video is all about the support rounds that artillery are going to be able to fire in Armored Warfare. You can see that the aiming circle has changed from the normal circle and is now a lot larger and looks different with the concentric white circles. Those are supposed to be showing you the area that you're going to be impacting. And by impacting, I mean you have two options of rounds to fire to support. One of those is a smoke round that of course provides a cover like I just stood there. And the other one is an illumination round to light up the enemy. And in case you want to know what that looks like, there it is. That's the enemy illumination round hovering over our side, lighting us up. So I'm vacating the premises. If I remember right, he actually fired two illumination rounds to light up that area. Uh, the, the rounds, both the smoke and the illumination, at least at tier four, have the same impact area, which is 30 meters. The duration is also the same for both at 10 seconds. This video is actually going to be a cut up or a montage of a few different games simply so I can show you the impact of the special shells. Because at tier 4 I'm only getting a total of 8 special rounds to be able to fire. So it's kind of hard to have one gameplay video and show you too much here. In this particular one I actually fire both an illumination round and then wait and fire a smoke round with the thought process being you provide smoke between your allies and the enemy and then you fired the illumination round behind to light them up. The problem was that in this particular game I didn't have any friendlies there to be able to fire. This I think was probably one of my first games so I just wanted to see how that would work out and see what it looks like. You know shiny new toy testing it out. In this next one I'm just showing that the tactic was trying to protect the retreat of my friendly teammates against the advancing horde of the enemy by firing some smoke rounds. That is one actually difference I've noticed playing on the Russian servers is they tend to blob up and move more so than the North American and European servers do. I don't know if that's just the players that are playing in the early tests over there or if that's normal meta for that region. But I probably should address that this is the Russian public test server. But before I do that, I just want to mention you can see here that as my illumination round lands, Yep, there it is. The tanks that I just shot towards actually become re-identified. You know, they were already lit up in the process of the battle here. But I had dropped some smoke, which I think probably was preventing my teammates from being able to see them. And one thing I've noticed or learned is that I want to kind of conserve my illumination rounds until I need them. You know, with only a 30 meter radius area that you are targeting with an illumination round, that's not very big. So it's probably not big enough to go hunting for the enemy towards the start of the game. You know, reserve the shells for firing in locations where enemies tend to snipe from. Wait until your teammates are going to be able to have firing solutions on them, of course, before you do it. Or maybe reserve some shells to light up the cap area or similar location if needed later on in the battle. Or like in this particular instance, there's a big heavy fight going on and those tanks were becoming unlit, especially when I dropped smoke. So I was going ahead and attempting to uh, light them up. And I do believe some of those lights were mine because the tanks had the eyeball above them, which is indicating that I was spotting it, which is kind of unique being able to be the one who is actually spotting tanks in an artillery. Which something else interesting I think happens here if I remember correctly is sometimes, yeah here it goes, you'll notice that the enemy artillery actually used an illumination round to find me before he shot. And if you don't remember or did not know, every time an artillery fires there's a ping on the map for the enemy artillery giving away the general vicinity. And every shot you take makes that vicinity or that area smaller so that eventually if you're not moving the enemy artillery is going to know right where you are and be able to counter battery you. And I was trying to provide some cover for that guy's retreat, but obviously it didn't work out too well. I can't remember for sure why I had left this clip in here other than just to show the thickness of the smoke when it is fired. And I was firing in between the enemy and my team to provide some support or some cover since we were losing at this moment in time. What is interesting is the game's pretty much lost right now, of course, but everybody's trying to still win or do damage, and 
help out. And the enemy artillery recognizes that uh, myself and the other artillery are able to still hit his teammates. And he's laying down an awful lot of uh, smoke rounds to cover up his teammates, which was a good move on his part. And I think that the game is pretty much over with here. I think I might take a couple blind shots before both myself and my friendly artillery end up dying. One thing I want to go ahead and show you is the ammo loading screen, just so that you can see that even if I try to lower my normal rounds, I cannot adjust how much support rounds I'm able to take. I only have a tier four maximum of eight supporting rounds to be able to fire. Okay, I think this next one is the last clip I have for this video. It's a little bit longer just so you can see some longer gameplay footage using supporting rounds along with regular artillery rounds. Going back to what I was trying to say earlier and I almost forgot to bring up is the gameplay footage you're seeing is coming from the Russian public test server. While it's not the exact same code or same version of software we're going to get on NA and EU when Early Access 4 launches, it's very close to it. In a way, I think Obsidian is testing the future test server with the Russian public test server. If you're not familiar with it in World of Tanks, before Wargaming releases a major patch, they will often open up a public test server and allow all players on to be able to test the new fixes, changes, and the equipment. Players generally like this because they get an idea of what to expect in the new update. And of course, Wargaming or any developer would like to have more eyes looking at any potential issues that might occur before they release a major patch. So this is something similar I think the Obsidian is doing with the Russian public test server in that it is a different build than what the RU server cluster currently has in early access as well. Their normal early access server is similar to what NA and EU is. This is actually a fourth server. And like I mentioned, I think it's the test of the future testing server. So as the end of that game, it wasn't that great of a one, but it's one of the few that I kept the results screen that show you the amount of credits and reputation you get for illuminating your enemies or hiding your allies with smoke. So this has been Spooky from ArborTalk.com. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Have a good day or good night wherever you are.